Well, here it is, the DIC and MIC model number P303C carbon fiber tripod with monopod features. I bought this uh, from AliExpress, which was my first order from AliExpress, the consumer sales arm of Alibaba, which means I bought it directly from China. This shipped out of Hong Kong by Federal Express International Economy. Uh, to my address here in Japan and I'm just showing you right here in this clip uh, how the packaging looks when it arrives it um, well it doesn't look like an Apple shipping box when you buy something from Apple but hey it's uh, it's from China it's it's decent it doesn't look severely damaged so uh, I'll get right to opening it now Okay, so maybe the box does look a little bit beat up. <laughs> uh, in my first purchase from AliExpress, I was a bit concerned, not knowing, am I going to get gypped? Is it going to be a legitimate transaction? Um, I, you're, what you're seeing is what I'm seeing for the first time. I've not opened this before. So we've got some packing here and nothing else in the box alright so we'll uh, get to looking at this here this is the carrying case for the tripod and um, it looks pretty good order here and zipping it you find the tripod and The uh, product certification made in China, number 18, it says, with some Allen wrenches there. Okay. Little spiked feet for placement in grass, I would assume. I've never used any spike feet on my tripods before. Until now, I'll admit to you, I've not purchased any direct from China tripods before. I've purchased Manfrotto. Uh, the tripod on which my GX7 is sitting right now is uh, the Rio 190 Anniversario, 10th anniversary. It's, uh, I think I purchased it back in 95. Quite old, but still uh, in service. But I wanted a carbon fiber tripod. So, that's what you're seeing here. Before I show all the goodies, on the inside of this... We see we've got a a uh, little pouch here, probably for holding your goodies. <laughs> little Allen wrenches and other things would fit right in there. And uh, looks like that's the only pocket on the inside. All right. And then what other accessories with this? We've got. Okay, I know what this is. This is the little Velcro. Um, I guess it's the handle cover, right? So you can wrap it around. At least that's what it seems to be. I haven't read the instruction manual yet, but it's got a lot of pockets in it here. Okay, that's included. And of course your shoulder strap also included. So that's the bag and it's all nice and well. But the most important part here, of course, is the tripod, which is what we will show you now. It comes with uh, the ball head, and it uh, has some soft uh, foam material on two of the legs, and We can pull out some of the legs here and uh, let's see the latches. They're push down latches to let the tripod latch in place, and I see a lock there. Okay, 
So I'll need to zoom out and show you the rest. So here's the tripod uh, sitting up with its legs. I extended it a little bit. Uh, the price of this was about $170, but I got it on an AliExpress discount day for $154.40 shipped. So that includes the FedEx shipping to my address in Japan. If you're in the U.S., probably a bit more, maybe the same, I don't know. Uh, you'd have to go to AliExpress and check it. You can see it comes with the ball head, and that has your little bubble level meter there so that you can get the level free um, also on the side it has a little bubble meter there and uh, the leg adjustment is pushed down and extended push down and adjust That's with the center column down. All head free. Makes a little sound when you twist. Quite light, unsurprising of course because it is carbon fiber. Alright, so giving you a close up here, we will take off a little adjustment here. You've got to do, take it off uh, by rotating this. Now once it's loose, because of these little metal protrusions here on either side, you cannot take it off just by unscrewing it a little bit. You have to unscrew it until you can pull it up and out because of these two. So these keep it from slipping off. You don't need a coin, thankfully. You've got a little loop there and just to give a demonstration I'll put in my trusty Lumix uh, GF1 camera onto it right. That's it again. And, and the camera is locked into place there Then of course with your ball head you've got a lot of movability there. And a little bit lock on it here as well. It extended out to see how tall. We can get it going here. So it's a, just a simple twist lock. One, two, three. Three locks there. And also on the other legs. Height, it's almost good enough for me now. I'm 5'9. And we can extend it up taller than I am, <laughs> which is pretty tall. It doesn't hit the ceiling by any means, but it is uh, the camera is above my head at this point. So, with the legs adjusted as such. It is by far the tallest tripod I've owned. All right, so here's a close-up again of the ball head. Um, it was a little bit loose, so I tightened it at its base. The thread wasn't perfectly tight. So I tightened it onto the center column here. And um, what you can see here is it's uh, the rotation is very fluid. I don't feel any grittiness feels very smooth and this is the lock to lock that so it won't 
rotate anymore or unlock it so it will rotate. And of course this knob is the one to unlock the ball itself. So the carbon fiber <laughs> pipes, um, I've never had a carbon fiber tripod before, I can't compare with anything else. It doesn't look exactly like the traditional, uh, what would I say, chessboard type uh, checkerboard pattern. It's more of these alternating stripe line pattern. Um, I guess that's just the way they make it. Very smooth to the feel. You can hear a little hollowness. Uh, of course it is hollow when you tap on it with a fingernail. Um, I don't see scratches or other uh, defects on it. Uh, it looks fairly good quality. Uh, I would say, to me anyway, a surprisingly good um, factory direct from China. And again, through AliExpress, I did purchase this uh, from the factory, or allegedly so, although it did ship out of Hong Kong. Uh, just to forewarn you, this tripod does not include any documentation. Um, I mean, for me, somebody who's used a camera and tripod before, it's fairly self-explanatory. Although, some of the aspects to it, for example, what's this little red guy here, uh, may not be self-explanatory. You can kind of take a logical guess. Maybe it helps to, to lock this. Why you'd need a double lock, I'm not sure. But uh, you've already got your main lock here. If we undo the main lock, you see that um, well, it allows, it allows it to slide free, but uh, if I twist this in, the main lock is still unlocked, but I can take away my hands and it's still, it won't slide. So this is, I guess, a secondary lock. So you can lock it here and here. So we'll take off this lock. And it's not falling. I'll hold it so it doesn't fall when I rotate this. And now it's it's moving. I did unscrew it all the way and check. This is greased. It's got a lot of grease in, in that, I guess, to keep it from rusting. Take it out. So there's a little guy. Um, I looked inside the hole here. And no, this metal tip does not press directly against your carbon fiber. Seems there's another carbon fiber pad in there that this pushes against when you screw it down and that in turn presses against here so this metal screw will not damage your pipe because it, it doesn't directly touch. It only indirectly presses against it. If there's any other use for this, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> uh, because again there's no documentation but uh, it does have this key ring on it for some reason. Maybe that's just to make it easier to turn. As you can see on one of the legs, it has an unlock lock twist to unlock lock on it. And this does not appear on the other two legs. So this is clearly, uh, again, no documentation, but we'll just assume for the moment. This is telling me this leg can be removed to become the monopod. So I can go ahead and give that a try. Here we are. We're going to unscrew this. I'm screwing it this way. Right? This way, meaning unlock. There we go. It's free. And here is the leg I removed, which um, is the monopod. Uh, and it is what it is. It's very light, of course, uh, because it's carbon fiber and you've got your um, screw mount here so you can put the ball head on it uh, to compare it with my Manfrotto monopod. I would say that, well, my Manfrotto uh, monopod, of course, is uh, an aluminum monopod that has some distinct advantages like these three feet uh, at the bottom. Uh, but basically the concept uh, is, is the same. You're going to put your head on top of here and you've got a monopod. You just don't have any feet at the bottom like you would with uh, 
the Manfrotto 561 BHDV. But I could use I could use this same head uh, with the carbon fiber monopod if I want to. It's just not going to uh, stand up on its own as does the Manfrotto or Manfrotto, however you wish to pronounce it. <laughs> that one stands up on its own and it's uh, pretty good actually. It um, does not tip over easily, even fully extended. And this monopod, the 561 BHDV, is actually almost as tall as, as this carbon fiber tripod. So anyway, but with the tripod, you can use it as a tripod or as a monopod. So that's the benefit of this DIC and MIC. Now as for construction, um, it seems pretty, pretty sturdy. Uh, this ball head, the ball itself, is metal. Even the the knobs feel like they're made of metal. Uh, all of the the bracket up here is metal. Of course, your little twist screws uh, have a rubberized part to them. But um, in the back, they seem to be made of metal. Of course, the frame here, even your little latches here, uh, they are not plastic from what I see. Uh, aluminum, I guess. Also, the uh, pipe caps, the top of the, the pipes, uh, metal. So, very well constructed, not something that's going to break over time, as might be the case if the latches, say, were plastic uh, instead of metal. And again, of course, your screw to maintain the center column as an additional lock is also metal. So, you've got a very well constructed carbon fiber, and I assume the metal is aluminum, but I'm not exactly sure on that but carbon fiber and metal uh, a set of materials for the the base of this tripod and it again is quite light compared to my Manfrotto uh, Rio 190 series that I'm using to shoot this video so this will be very nicely portable and of course it's very nice because it comes with that carrying case too so what is this little guy for at the base of the center column? Um, I'm not a tripod expert, but I would assume if you wanted to put a sandbag or some other weight here uh, to make it heavier, to make sure nobody's going to knock it over under any circumstances, you could hang that from here. I've never done that on my tripods, but it's nice you have that just so that you can, especially because this is not a really heavy tripod. So uh, if you've got a seriously long lens and, and a lot of heaviness atop, maybe you want to weight it down a little bit more. Um, it has enough weight for my GX7 and um, 14 to 140 lens. I mean, the micro four thirds system that I use uh, wouldn't need any weights. But if you, if you want to make sure it's even more solid than it is, then you could put a weight here. All right, uh, just to show you again, I've got my GF1 here. Um, about putting on the camera. If you look at the bottom, you'll see that this allows the battery door to be opened. It should work the same on my GX7. I'll try that, but um, which is very nice. However, you need to take a look at the mount here and give consideration to that because if you mount it this way, which you probably want to do because all of the text here, you know, is written right here. Well, if you do it that way, you won't be able to open your battery door on that side, right? You can see why, because of this guy. So what you'll have to do is put him like this camera like this and then use it this way. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be anyway but um, you know there's no documentation so uh, what you what you see is to, to, to open the battery door but even then it, it would depend on the camera and how how far over the hinge is whether you can open it completely or not 
to take out the battery or if you're like me and have micro four thirds cameras to have the uh, AC adapter part here if you want to remove that. So on this GF1, uh, it looks like it's not going to work once it's mounted. Unmounted with this guy on, yeah, you can leave your your frame on him and be able to take it out, but while on the camera here, at least for this particular camera, you're not going to be able to do it. So whether you can do it on your camera or not will vary depending on the distances. But just keep in mind that the way the battery door opens with it off the tripod, so you can see it's perfect now, is different than when it's on. So when it's on the tripod, for this camera anyway, GF1, you're not going to be able to uh, find that usable. The card slot being here well seems like just barely <laughs> just barely but maybe not it's really not the greatest thing so you probably want to take it off at least for this camera I use my GX7 more than the GF1 now anyway but anyway that's just something to note even if you can open it you're not going to be able to mount it this way with the text facing you. You're going to have to do it this way. Uh, you might say, okay, what if you just take the ball head and, and uh, flip it around this way? Yeah, you could do that. So then you have, again, for this camera, it's not going to work, but if you wanted to see the text and and uh, I don't know, I don't really know that I'm that precise of a person, but if you wanted to do that, okay, this would be the way to do it because the ball would let you rotate it. But whether it's going to allow you with your camera to have the battery door open or not, well, that's something that um, may or may not work for you. Well, I've got my GX7 on this uh, P303C tripod right now. And I'm pleased to report that I can open the battery door just fine with it mounted on the tripod. So I'm just showing uh, panning here. With my hands, of course. The smoothness of panning by hand, of course, isn't going to be professional, but you can somewhat see how it is. Um, and again, this is sliding the base of the ball head. The point where you saw the triangle is uh, touching the, uh, the numbers 60, 90, and so on. I guess it's greased. It's fairly fluid. I don't hear any sounds of grinding. I don't feel any resistance. It just, it just works. Of course, the ball head here, just that. So, uh, no complaints about the head. It feels very well made. It looks good. Um, it turns well. I like the ball head. The, uh, the level adjustments on it uh, are nice to be level with the ground. So, overall, uh, very nice. So once again, taking a closer look at the <clears throat> the levels here, um, you can adjust to get the levels at the top here. So you can see both here and here to get the levels exactly right. You can also see them here. So you've got your horizontal and of course your vertical and you can adjust it down like so. So you can get your levels there just right. But this there square in the center now. So very nice and convenient. Not all tripods come with these helps.
So yet another plus for this tripod. So here we have the tripod with the center column all the way down and this is one take up on the adjustment here, uh, meaning that the legs are spread out a little bit wider. The center column does not touch the ground. It's about a centimeter off of the ground in this particular case. And this is the tripod at uh, one more tick up, which means you can spread the legs out even wider. The center column is touching the ground in this case, and um, so you can see how low it can get while still using the center column, assuming you're on a flat surface. So it's about uh, how many feet? If you say in feet, one foot, one and a half uh, feet off the ground. So maybe about 50 centimeters from ground level to uh, the top here. So what we here have here is a height comparison you can see between my three tripods, the DIC and MIC P303C carbon fiber is that left in the middle I've got my Rio 190 and Manfrotto anniversario which I've had since about 1995 still uh, works fairly well it's an aluminum tripod and at right the uh, Manfrotto monopod um, that is the tallest of the bunch and uh, uh, closed down. All of these, of course, are at their minimum heights with the heads attached. And you can see just how much savings you have with the carbon fiber new tripod that I just purchased at Lyft. And of course, in addition to it being more compact, it's also lighter as well, but not too light. It's what I would consider to be just right for my micro four thirds camera equipment. So here is a height comparison between my three tripods. On the left, we've got the DIC and MIC P303C carbon fiber tripod from China. Uh, please be aware that the legs are all locked into place at the setting where the legs are uh, the, the closest to the center column. The middle one is my Rio 190 Manfrotto and that is with the tripod legs locked in place. Um, there are no other locking points on the Manfrotto 190 Rio um, unlike the P303C which has the ability to widen its legs out into locking positions, two more locking positions. The Manfrotto uh, 190 only has what you see here and be aware when you're comparing these heights I'm five foot nine and this P303C at left here stands as tall as I am to the top of my head and of course my camera would go atop that so for me being one to look at eye level obviously this is going to be sufficient height for me if you're taller than me maybe six foot still you're going to have uh, a pretty good amount of height there at the locking position which you see here and of course at the right you've got my uh, Manfrotto monopod which has the little feet at the bottom to keep it standing you can also convert the P303C to monopod by removing one of the legs and then just putting the head on it but of course uh, you do not have little feet at the bottom that spread out you're going to have just your regular rubber foot there so you will have to hold it if you use it in monopod um, position whereas this one even though Manfrotto recommends that you hold it and obviously with extended all the way up this high it'd be a pretty good idea to hold it especially with an expensive camera on the top but as you can see it's amazingly stable uh, even with those little feet at this height and you can see the ceiling up there so it's uh, it's pretty tall, this Manfrotto monopod, but um, I never use it at that height. It's just it's more than enough height for me. I really don't need to use it uh, at that height. Perhaps if I were stepping on a chair, 
uh, then it, it might come in handy, the additional height. But obviously, this carbon fiber P303C, it's small enough and light enough to take it as a travel, travel um, tripod. And with that in mind, it has uh, definitely uh, sufficient height uh, for me there. So again, the height comparison of the three. Quite a bit more compact than my 190 series Manfrotto tripod, much lighter too, and it includes a very nice ball head. I'm very pleased with the purchase. Most of the other carbon fiber tripods from the big brand names, Gitzo and uh, Manfrotto and all of those names, you're going to be paying $350 or more. Uh, and those are usually sometimes made in Italy uh, for Manfrotto, but uh, there are some parts made in China. This is all made in China. I haven't seen anything that really gives me that, wow, it's low quality, it's made in China. I, I don't really have that feel with this. It feels uh, very well made. Uh, you might say, well, they copied uh, this part from this guy, this part from that guy. I don't know anything about that. Maybe some of you will comment on that. But what I can say is that if it is a copy, it's a very good one, and it, uh, it works very well. It will serve my purpose well. Uh, some people may say it's still not quite small enough for a travel tripod, but I don't know. Uh, I think it would fit in a, in a decent sized suitcase fairly well. And, of course, it includes uh, a very nice carrying case with it uh, and accessories too. So for the price I paid for it, which was less than $160 shipped, including shipping, to me uh, that's a phenomenal deal. And I would, uh, at least at this point, I don't have months or years of experience with it, but I would say that it was definitely, for me anyway, uh, worth the price. So I would I would, of course, recommend that uh, someone looking for a tripod give this some consideration uh, because it may actually work fairly well for you uh, if you're looking for a reasonably priced uh, carbon fiber tripod. Thank you for watching.